Today I am going to begin a five-week series entitled Conscious Co-Creating. And uh, it's a little bit of a departure for me because I, don't, I haven't focused a whole lot on how we create, how we manifest and demonstrate our experience, and what we do to consciously do that. So uh, as I've been thinking about that, I'm kind of excited about this, about this series. And if I get too far ahead of myself, if I start talking too fast, then just remind me to stop and take a breath because I'm excited about, for myself, I think it's time for me to revisit these ideas, these concepts about how we create, how we manifest and demonstrate what we really, what our heart's desires are. And I think it's time for us, as a spiritual community, to take, a, take some time to look at that and to, what are those heart's desires? Now, how do we bring them into manifestation? As Charles Fillmore said in that reading, it's ours to take hold of that and to then bring that into demonstration. You know, I heard once that, uh, I think it was a teacher at Unity Village, say that while some other New Thought movements are more about demonstration, unity is more about realization. And I took that to heart. And so I've, I've done a lot more focus on the idea of realization than on demonstration. But as I've considered that more, I realized, well, that's really not true. Because unity was founded on a very dramatic demonstration in Myrtle Fillmore. She demonstrated through her healing the principles that we teach. For those of you who don't know the story, Myrtle Fillmore was diagnosed with tuberculosis at an early age. So in that time, in the early, late, late 1800s, that was really a death sentence. There was nothing to do about that. And so through the power of connecting with presence, connecting with spirit and the divine life that is expressing in and through all of us, her body was healed. If that's not a demonstration of the principles, I don't know what is. And even the fifth principle of unity says, it's great to know this stuff, but if you don't put it into practice, what good is it? So if we're not embodying the principles, if we're not living the principles and demonstrating the principles, then we're somehow missing a piece. And demonstration, as we talk about manifestation, is just a measurement. It's a way that we can uh, sort of discern and measure. It's like a measuring stick for how are we embodying and living the principles. And so that's what we're talking about, what I'll be talking about over the next few weeks. How do we do that? What is that about? And uh, how do we connect with a desire? Uh, before I get too far down the road, I uh, just want to be sure we're clear on... Uh, these ideas of realization and demonstration. Charles Fillmore talked about realization as that knowing, kind of an inner knowing, when you know that you know that you know. How many of you have ever had an experience where you just know? You just know that something is right. You know it's true. You know. And so that's what Charles Fillmore was talking about, that spiritual inner knowing is realization. I know it in my gut. I know it in my heart. I know it in my mind. And so realization is that idea. And he talked about how that precedes demonstration. So demonstration and manifestation, we use those words interchangeably. It's what happens out here. It's what happens in our bodies, in our finances, in our relationships, in our jobs, our vocations, our avocations. It's how we demonstrate, how we live in the world. And so when we talk about those things, that's really what we're talking about. And if you were here last week, you heard uh, Reverend Ma uh, David Alt talk about how everything happens twice. First in consciousness, which is that realization piece I was talking about, and then in demonstration. 
So that is really what we're going to be delving into over the next few weeks. How, do we, how does that process work and how do we consciously engage in it? Does that sound good? All right. So, some of you may have seen the Facebook video I posted yesterday where I made a promise that I would give you this morning, I would give you the key to manifesting everything your heart desires. Anybody see that? Anybody here because of that? (laughs) So I made a promise that I would give you today the key to demonstrating everything your heart desires. You ready? You got your ears open? The key to demonstrating everything your heart desires is to always focus on the what and let go of the how. Now, for many of you, that's not new information but I'm going to kind of tease that apart a little bit. Always focus on the what. Let go of the how. In other words, get out of your own way. In other words, let go and let God. Whatever works for you. But I like the idea that we let go We focus on the what, let go of the how. So I'm going to back up just a little bit, kind of start at the beginning. Let's start at the very beginning. (coughs) Very good place to start. All right, (laughs) off track. I told you I was going to probably do that. So when we talk about desire... Now, what I said was, I would give you the key to demonstrating your heart's desire. I want to be very clear about that. Because quite often, when we talk about what we desire, what do we talk about? More money, a new house, maybe a new relationship, maybe a new job. We talk about desire in that way. That's what we desire. But what I want to suggest is that's more about the how than the what. Make sense? When we talk about, when we think about what we desire in the physical manifested form, that's more about the how than the what. When I'm talking about the what, I think that our heart desire are the foundation of the what. <clears throat> and when I talk about our heart's desires, I'm talking about those desires that are born in us as those expressions of the divine life. That we are here as expressions of that one power, one presence, one life, and we are here to be those vessels of that divine life, and we are here to allow that life to have its life in us, through us, as us. That has, does not mean we can't experience all of that stuff that we think we want. With me so far? <coughs> Charles Fillmore said, again, Charles Fillmore's co-founder of Unity, said that our inheritance as expressions of that divine life are what he called divine ideals. Divine ideals. Now, he might have said divine idea or divine ideals, but I think I want to make a distinction between the two. Divine ideals are those concepts like harmony and unity and love and joy and peace, 
freedom, abundance. Those are the divine ideals that are our inheritance. He said, you are heir to the kingdom. And the kingdom is replete with divine ideals. Seek the kingdom first. What do we do? We seek the stuff. We seek what we think we desire. Again, don't hear me say that there's anything wrong with any of that. All of that's great. But again, that is the how. The what is the divine ideals that are born within us as our inheritance. And so what Jesus said was, seek the kingdom and then all the other stuff. So I believe our heart's desire is to connect with those divine ideals first. And then out of that, that is the what. And the how is then born out of that. And that, what is born from that, is then what I think of as the divine idea. Am I getting too... Okay. <laughs> Let me be sure I'm, I'm following myself. Not that you're following me, but am I making sense to myself? So, <clears throat> that is the... When I'm talking about, when I say the key to manifesting your heart's desires is to only focus on the what, not on the how. And when we focus on the what, which is the initial desire, and we seek to then be inspired by a divine idea, then the divine idea then becomes the what? <clears throat> Let me see if I can give a good example of that. But let me just say this, too, before I do that. What Fillmore also said is that every divine ideal or divine idea is a seed that contains within itself all that it needs in order to demonstrate. All that is needed in order for it to blossom forth in our lives. So if, say, freedom is a divine ideal, then that seed of that divine ideal contains within itself everything that it needs to be experienced, to be expressed through us. And then, as a result of our connecting with that divine ideal, a divine idea is then inspired. Ready for an example? Okay. <clears throat> this is what came to me this week because, you know, I heard about somebody who might want some more money <laughs> in his life. So that's the how. But what I was thinking is that's the what. I want more money in my life, and so I want to be attracting more money into my experience. So in my mind, initially, that was the what. But when I recognize that's the how, then I can go deeper into the what. And so as I allow myself to stop as we did earlier, 
remove my focus from any condition on the outer. I know that's sometimes challenging for us to do. To remove our focus from the condition, to focus my attention and awareness in my heart where all of that actually is born, I was able to connect with the divine ideal that that money was representing for me. And what I got in touch with was the divine ideal is freedom. The divine ideal that I want to experience in my life is freedom. Freedom to to go where I want to go, freedom to have what I want to have, freedom to just do whatever calls me to do without worrying about whether I can pay for it or not, or if I have the resources or not. So I want freedom in my life. So that's the divine ideal. And my opportunity at that point is to go within and access the kingdom within me, within the center of my being. The kingdom that Charles Fillmore said is replete with all of those divine ideals. And then when we remove our focus from the external, focus on the inner and allow those divine ideals to come alive within us, to feel what it feels like to experience freedom, to know that that is my divine inheritance. It is my birthright as an expression of that divine life to experience freedom and to express that freedom and to feel into that place of freedom. And when I get in touch with that, ah, just like that openness, that spaciousness, that opportunity just to flow with the river of life without any worry or concern, just be in the flow. How beautiful that feels, how easy, how relaxed that feels. And then I get to open up to the divine idea that is then birthed from that So freedom, I experience it, I feel it, I sense it. So what is a divine idea that comes from that? And what I did not expect was, the divine idea that came to me was creative expression. I was like, okay, well, that's not telling me how to get money. (laughs) But what came to me was creative expression. It's like, oh, okay. That's the divine idea born of connecting with the divine ideal. And so I sat with that. (laughs) I sat in that idea of Creative expression. What does that look like for me? For me. Because what another piece of this I want to share with you this morning is that divine ideals are universal. They are aspects of all of creation, all of us. Divine ideas in my way of thinking, are a little more personal. How am I to express this divine ideal? How is that going to show up in my individuated expression of the divine? And so when I got this creative expression, it's like, wow, what does that mean for me? And so, taking that a step further. So you go from the what of freedom to the how of creative expression, and then the creative expression becomes the what. 
And so you focus on the what at the deepest level, and then a how comes into your awareness. And then the how, that how, then becomes the what. What? The what is creative expression. Well, how is that going to show up? So you center yourself. I, it's just what I did. Okay, center myself. I feel the energy of freedom. I feel the energy of creative expression. And center and ask, how is that going to show up? Ask the depth of my heart. How does that show up for me? And what comes up for me then is a how that says, writing. Maybe you want to write a book. Maybe you want to record a CD. Maybe you want to learn to be a better speaker. Maybe what all of those ideas. And guess what? <clears throat> you go back here to the what of freedom. Out of freedom is born this idea of creative expression that then becomes the what. And then born out of that is this idea for a book or a CD or whatever that might be for you. And the powerful thing about that is that in the seed of every divine idea contains its own fulfillment. Just like the seed of a tomato plant contains within itself the tomatoes. It is that essence of life as the tomato wanting to express itself, to take root, to germinate, take root, blossom forth, and become the tomato. Well, guess what? You have those same seeds inside of you that are born from the essence of who you are. Just waiting for you to receive it to grab hold of it, to allow it to be, to, take, to be planted, to germinate, to take root, to blossom forth, and to become that which you have come forth to be. And we'll pick up there next week. <laughs> but what I would like for you to do this week, because I really want us to not just hear about this, not just uh, get a mental idea about it, but I would like for us to start to embody it, to really take it to heart, and to practice it, to play with it, and see if it works for you, see if these concepts work for you. And so I'd just like you to take, identify something in your life that you would like to have different. If you want more money, if you want a new job, if you want a new relationship, if you want to sing, if you want to write, if whatever those things are, the hows. And remove your focus from the hows and come back into that place of the what. The divine ideals that are your inheritance just waiting to be expressed through you. Get in touch with that, and then maybe make a list of those. Find out what those divine ideals are that are just longing to be expressed through you. Connect with that, and if you want to take it the next step, well, I'm in the what, so what is the how for that what? Get into that place of the what, and then focus on, ah, oh, well, what's the how there? And so it's really about opening ourselves to a deeper connection with the power of creation, the power of life that gave birth to us, that gives us life, that is our life, and that we are vessels for. And my belief is, and we'll talk more about this over the past, over the next few weeks, my belief is 
that just like the tomato seed doesn't stress and strain about becoming the tomato plant and blossoming forth with, with miracles of tomatoes, you and I can do the same thing. That we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to stress. We don't have to strain. We don't have to try to make something happen when we connect with the life that wants to live itself as us. I think life is meant to be joyous and easy and free and exciting. Don't you? Don't you? So can we embrace that? How do we get into the flow of that? And what came to me uh, this week, and I'm I'm going to play with this, is that I had said we were going to use our 12 powers to learn how to co-create what we want to create in our lives. But that sounds like a lot of work to me. (laughs) So what came to me is that maybe we can use our 12 powers not in efforting, but in ease. That our 12 powers, as Charles Fillmore defined them, can be embodied and embraced for us to continue to focus on the what, not on the how. That our 12 powers can be used for help us just get out of the way and let life happen through us. Sound good? All right. We'll stop there for now. (laughs) So, uh, again, the key, and we're going to again explore how we use that key over the next few weeks. The key is to only focus on the what and let the universe take care of the how. And notice this week when you want to get into the how, because we all do that. We all want to take control. We all want to figure it out. So just notice, practice that this week. Stay in the what. Stay in the what.